3210R is the exact model name of the BenQ Mobius that we have on review. To be more specific, it has an EX at the front, but we'll forget about that. Now, the monitor in question has a 1440p 165Hz VA panel and furthermore has a 32-inch curved form factor. In this review, you're going to be seeing if it's actually worth its price tag because in the UK it can be found for roughly £480, while in the US it can be found for roughly $550. Now to kick off this review, I do want to quickly point out that this monitor has a singular DisplayPort 1.4 input and two HDMI 2.0 inputs. The reason this is important is because the latter is capped at 1440p at 144Hz and as a result if you have a laptop that only has HDMI 2.0 as an output or even HDMI 2.1 as an output due to the monitor's bandwidth capabilities via its HDMI 2.0 port it means that you can't output anything more than 1440p at 144Hz. Nevertheless, be it 144Hz or 165Hz, I think you'll really struggle to tell the difference between the two refresh rates, so this really shouldn't be something that will put you off the monitor. So when it comes to gaming, how does it actually perform? Well first off I do have to talk about its input lag, and here I must say I was really impressed. I put it through its paces on Counter Strike and of course I was able to also test it, and here I found that the monitor's input lag responded very well. I actually had it tested at 5 milliseconds, which is actually really impressive for a monitor of its class and indeed type, and in this respect it means that it can certainly be used for competitive gaming. But of course, input lag is only one side of the puzzle. What about when it comes to its response time? Well similarly here I was actually left pretty impressed. Even in its maximum AMA mode, which is the overdrive mode that you can dial up through the OSD, and therefore in even its level 3 mode, there's actually minimal amount of overshoot ghosting, in other words purple trailing. Of course this might be a little bit more apparent if you're playing more graphically intense games, but in a game like Counter Strike I had no issues whatsoever seeing my enemies when I was panning across different scenes. Now what I will say here is that if you're playing more casual games, let's say for example Destiny 2 or let's say Battlefield or some other games like that, then you might want to dial the AMA down one notch to level 2 in order to incur very little inverse ghosting if at all any, and therefore means that you'll get a little bit of a slower response time of the monitor all while getting a slightly better visual experience. Now the only thing I will say over here is that given it's a VA panel, it's not exactly going to be competing with class leading IPS monitors that I've previously tested, or even some of the class leading VA panels that you can find out there. Ultimately its response time is perfectly acceptable for a lot of gamers, but if you're a hardcore competitive gamer like myself, and you're playing let's say CSGO religiously, then this monitor might not be quite as well suited in comparison to other monitors out there on the market. Now I should point out that this monitor also has a blur reduction technology built in and it can simultaneously be used with the overdrive modes because certain other monitor manufacturers or indeed panels out there lock the overdrive. Well that's not the case with this BenQ monitor and as a result makes it quite handy in order to reduce the blur all while also providing the best sort of response time from the monitor. Here you'll be able to see how it performs and indeed looks in my UFO tests and this was also conducted at 165Hz. Hopefully the images will give you a good indication that the blur reduction mode does certainly aid the overall experience and indeed does reduce the blur that you will incur on this large size monitor. So moving swiftly on, the monitor also has VRR technology built in, in other words AMD FreeSync support. Now in my case I'm able to use Nvidia G-Sync while I was connected over to DisplayPort to my RTX 3080. Here I was able to run the Nvidia Pendulum demo without incurring any artifacts or any black screen issues. Furthermore, I was able also to play Destiny 2 at 1440p at 165Hz refresh rate while running G-Sync enabled and also HDR. So all the technologies can simultaneously work in tandem, at least in my case when I was connected over DisplayPort. Now this perfectly leads me on to HDR, which frankly is its biggest disappointment. 
the monitor's HDR performance is subpar. In fact, I didn't even get to hit the HDR 400 standard that the manufacturer actually claims, whereby I recorded a peak brightness of around 353 nits. Nevertheless, here the HDR is just not all that good, and suffice to say that if you are going to be looking to play HDR games, you might want to look at some of the alternatives out there on the market. Now I should also mention that the monitor has a backlight control which you can enable or disable appropriately on the OSD. Now here you can hopefully see for yourself that the monitor does get a lot darker when it's enabled, and indeed is present when you have an HDR signal. What I will say here is that it won't compete with monitors that have full array local dimming or indeed have dimming zones that they can switch on or off. But nevertheless, it's great to see that BenQ have incorporated the feature and it's useful for those people who are, in some respect, going to be consuming some HDR content. Now with HDR aside, this actually perfectly leads me onto console gaming. Now this monitor will accept a 4K signal input, which does mean that if you have an Xbox or a PlayStation, you might be able to output 4 4K at 24p or 30p. Now if you do have a Xbox you'll also be able to benefit at 1440p at 120Hz and be it if you have an Xbox or a PlayStation you'll be also able to use this monitor at up to 120fps while running at a full HD resolution. So with the gaming section out of the way what about when it comes to its image quality? Well here the monitor has a sRGB emulation mode and it's certainly appreciated. When I put it across my data color Spider-X Elite, I noted an average delta of 1.1 and a maximum of 2.03. You can see also here that the gamut coverage and the gamut volume in the sRGB standard was actually pretty good, whereby it was only overextending a little bit in the warmer tones. Now it doesn't also have to be running on the sRGB mode because you can run it in terms of a normal mode and therefore get a slightly wider color gamut monitor. Although you should note over here that the overall color accuracy does drop whereby Dell T gets to 3.22 as average and a maximum of 7.92. Now as we move back to the sRGB emulation mode, you'll be also able to see over here that the monitor's brightness was recorded in a variety of different ways. In terms of HDR, in terms of sRGB slash the normal mode and also in this blur reduction mode. Surprisingly, the blur reduction mode is not only brighter in terms of its minimum brightness, but also in terms of peak brightness, whereby it achieves 330 nits as opposed to the 240 nits that you get in the normal brightness mode. As for contrast ratio, given this is a VA panel, it's no surprise that you got a pretty good figure of 1961 to 1. And as for the measured white point, I noted 6156 Kelvin in comparison to the 6504 Kelvin target. You can also see here that the gamma in its sRGB emulation mode is pretty bang on to the 2.2 standard. However, the same couldn't be quite said when you take it outside of its sRGB standard and you can see here the gamma goes absolutely ballistic. Specifically when you go over a certain amount of brightness, it just seems to go really high. I'm not really sure what the cause is over here, but at least to the naked eye what I will say is that the monitor does have a sort of punchy type of colour and as a result will be a little bit off in terms of how you're viewing the image, but nevertheless will definitely suffice for a lot of gamers out there. Now moving on we get onto brightness uniformity and I appreciate this is somewhat panel lottery, but nevertheless here you can see at the bottom right hand corner it doesn't do as well, but it's perfectly acceptable for a 32 inch VA panel. As for the overall backlight bleed or the clouding that you'll get, it is, does seem a little bit more apparent on this model in comparison to other 32 inch VA panels that I've tested in the past. But of course here this monitor will do far better in comparison to an equivalent IPS panel which will undoubtedly suffer from a lot of IPS bleed. Now moving on to the monitor's OSD can be accessed through a physical button found towards the bottom of the monitor. It's just off center and I do find it quite awkward to use because it just resides at next to the power button. Now thankfully BenQ do offer a wireless remote within the package and therefore makes it far more intuitive and easier to access the OSD. Now when you do access the OSD you'll have a few quick settings but these can be adjusted per mode and here if we do access the OSD itself you'll be able to see over here you've got the quick menu which you can customize between standard game and cinema. Now these modes can also be selected via each input so therefore you've got the 
different modes per input. And then you've got oddly a scenario which you can enable or disable. I do find this somewhat confusing, but you can find some more information on BenQ's website. Ultimately, you'll probably want to leave the scenario on so that it's actually doing what it says. Now, as for the color modes, you've got a few different ones to choose from. And I did reference these before in my image quality section. You'll probably want to run on custom or indeed if you want this pinpoint color accuracy, you'll want to run on sRGB. However, on sRGB mode, you can see that it does disable a few options such as let's say the blur reduction mode. So if you do want to enable that, you'll want to go on the custom mode. Again, do bear in mind what I said about the gamma and how that affects it and of course the overall color accuracy. Nevertheless, over here through the custom mode, you've got a whole host of different functionalities and you can enable and disable blur reduction and you can also play around with the AMA and you've also got the color temperature, which I would suggest running on normal, but you can also go on user defined if you want to adjust the RGB values. Now you've got the eye care, which is simultaneously linked with the BI plus. It's a sensor found towards the front of the monitor and allows you to have a little bit of a bettered experience when it comes to lower light conditions. It adjusts the overall color temperature of the monitor. You can adjust this by duration and you can also enable a color weakness if you do have it. Now as for audio, the monitor actually has built in speakers, which are seriously impressive. Through the OST you can select the different EQs and I would select the cinema or indeed the pop and life function. Now what I'll say over here is the overall audio quality is pretty impressive although it won't compete with a set of bookshelf speakers and or a set of headphones but it certainly will suffice for those people who just want to do some basic music listening or indeed gaming using just the built-in speakers of the monitor. Now elsewhere you do also have lighting that you can enable and here you've got a few different options to select. So for example spectrum and if you go on single for example you'll have the color modes that you can select as well. Now what I will say over here is that the overall colors that they do produce or the brightness should I say is not that good and therefore I suspect most people will actually want to leave this disabled in order to reduce their power consumption but for some reason if you want some extra eye candy and you can benefit from actually looking at the back of the monitor then of course feel free to leave this enabled. Now as for the system settings you have got the LED indicator which you might want to leave enabled so you can differentiate it between the OSD button found towards the off center of the bottom bezel of the monitor and then you've also got some information which you can access whereby you can see if it's running HDR or not or indeed the resolution and the refresh rate. Now with the OSD section out of the way I should also mention that the overall design and aesthetics of the monitor are certainly appealing. Of course I did talk about the somewhat pointless inclusion of the RGB lights at the back of the monitor but around the back you also be able to see that the monitor has a quite stylish finish. Around the front, of course, you have got that curvature, which does add a little bit of extra immersion. And thanks to the three side borderless design means that the 32 inch form factor will hopefully not take up too much space on your desk. Now the stand itself also provides a sturdy design and gives you a height, tilt and pivot adjustment, but it can't be rotated. Although that's no surprise given the monitor size and indeed the fact that it's also got that curvature. Elsewhere, it should be pointed out that if you do not like the stand, and specifically you don't like the orange inserts that can be found towards the inner side of the stand, you can replace it with a Visa compatible stand, and as a result can have it on a multi-monitor setup, or indeed if you were to wall mount it on a certain setup. And so this brings me on to my verdict, and really on the whole I've been pretty impressed by the BenQ Mobius EX3210R, let alone for its memorable name. However, the problem I have is its overall asking price, at least at the time of filming. It can be found for roughly £480 in the UK and $550 in the US. And as a result, if you're just a regular gamer, you might want to look at the alternatives from AOC and Samsung. They'll be listed down in the description below. Now, I do appreciate that these monitors don't have the same sort of sRGB color accuracy. So indeed, if you want a 32-inch curved VA panel and you also want pinpoint sRGB color accuracy with decent gaming credentials, then I can't personally think of a better alternative than this BenQ monitor. But I do understand that is somewhat of a niche and as a result means that the other monitors might be a better pick. Similarly, if you're a hardcore competitive gamer, you might want to consider jumping onto the IPS bandwagon instead and going for a 27 inch 1440p monitor. These monitors, even from BenQ, do a fantastic job across the board and ones I would actively recommend and or purchase myself. Now, I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comments section below as to if you think the BenQ's asking price is actually worthwhile, specifically given its overall sRGB color accuracy. 
Now, if you enjoyed this detailed review and want to see more from the channel, do drop a like, subscribe and hit that bell notification. Of course, if you haven't already. Now, these will be greatly appreciated and allow me to continue doing detailed, honest reviews like this one. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.